The Armenian National Liberation Movement Armenian, Sarzam, Sarzam, aimed at the establishment of an Armenian state. It included social, cultural, but primarily political and military movements that reached their height during World War I and the following years. Influenced by the Age of Enlightenment and the rise of nationalism under the Ottoman Empire, the Armenian national movement developed in the early 1860s. Its emergence was similar to that of movements in the Balkan nations, especially the Greek revolutionaries who fought the Greek War of Independence. The Armenian elite and various militant groups sought to defend the mostly rural Armenian population of the Eastern Ottoman Empire from the Muslims, being Christian, but the ultimate goal was to push for reforms in the six vilayets at first and after this failed, the creation of an Armenian state in the Armenian populated areas controlled at the time by the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire. Since the late 1880s, the movement engaged in guerrilla warfare with the Ottoman government and the Kurdish irregulars in the eastern regions of the empire, led by the three Armenian political parties named the Social Democrat Hunchakian Party, the Armenakan Party and the Armenian Revolutionary Federation. Armenians generally saw Russia as their natural ally in the fight against Turks although Russia maintained an oppressive policy in the Caucasus. Only after losing its presence in Europe after the Balkan Wars, the Ottoman government was forced to sign the Armenian Reform Package in early 1914, however it was disrupted by World War I. During World War I, the Armenians living in the Ottoman Empire were systematically exterminated by the government in the Armenian Genocide. According to some estimates, from 1894 to 1923, about 1,500,000—2 2 million Armenians were killed by the Ottoman Empire. After the decision to exterminate the Armenians was taken by the Ottoman Ministry of Interior and first implemented with the Directive 8682 on February 25, 1915, tens of thousands of Russian Armenians joined the Russian army as Armenian volunteer units with a Russian promise for autonomy. By 1917, Russia controlled many Armenian populated areas of the Ottoman Empire. After the October Revolution, however, the Russian troops retreated and left the Armenians irregulars one on one with the Turks. The Armenian National Council proclaimed the Republic of Armenia on May 28, 1918, thus establishing an Armenian state in the Armenian populated parts of the Southern Caucasus. By 1920, the Bolshevik government in Russia and Ankara government had successfully came to power in their respective countries. The Turkish revolutionaries successfully occupied western half of Armenia, while the Red Army invaded and annexed the Republic of Armenia in December 1920. A friendship treaty was signed between Bolshevik Russia and Kemalist Turkey in 1921. The formerly Russian-controlled parts of Armenia were mostly annexed by the Soviet Union, in parts of which the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic was established. Hundreds of thousands of genocide refugees found themselves in the Middle East, Greece, France and the U.S. giving start to a new era of the Armenian diaspora. Soviet Armenia existed until 1991, when the Soviet Union disintegrated and the current Third Republic of Armenia was established. <inaudible> Origins Nationalism was an important factor in the development of Europe. In the 19th century, a wave of Romantic nationalism swept the continent of Europe transforming the countries of the continent. Some new countries, such as Germany and Italy were formed by uniting smaller states with a common, national identity. Others, such as Romania, Greece, Poland and Bulgaria, were formed by winning their independence. Armenians were living among Ottoman Empire and Russian Empire during the rise of nationalism. In 1827–1828, Tsar Nicholas I in Russo-Persian War, 1826–1828 sought help from Armenians, promising that after the war, their lives would improve. In 1828, Russia annexed Yerevan, Nakhchivan, and the surrounding countryside with the Treaty of Turkmenche. Armenians still living under Persian rule were encouraged to emigrate to Russian Armenia and 30,000 followed the call. In 1828, the Russians declared Russo-Turkish War, 1828–1829 and in the Treaty of Adrianople, Akhalkalak and Akhaltik exchanged to Russia. There was a new wave of immigration as 25,000 Ottoman Armenians moved to Russian Armenia. Russia annexed significant portion of the Armenians. 
In 1897 Russian census stated that 1,127,212 Armenians were in the Russian lands Erevan, 439,926, Elizabethpol, 298,790, Kars 72,967, Tiflis, 230,379, Baku, 52,770, Chernomorsk, 6,223 Dagestan, 1,652 2, Kutais, 24,505. At the same period 1896 Vital Queenet Armenians in the Ottoman Empire were 1,095,889 Adana Vilayet, 97,450 Aleppo Vilayet, 37,999 Ankara Vilayet, 94,298 Bitlis Vilayet, 131,300 Bursa Vilayet, 88,991 Diyar Ibekr Vilayet, 67,718 Erzurum Vilayet Vilayet, 134,967, Izmir Vilayet, 15,105, Izmit, 48,655, Kastamanu Vilayet, 2,647, Mamur ul Azil Vilayet, 79,128, Shivas Vilayet, 170,433, Trebizond Vilayet, 47, 20, Van Vilayet, 79,998. There were many Armenians familiar with Russian customs. Russia, for Armenians, was also a path to Europe. In 1836, Russifican, Russian cultural advances included limited Russian reforms. Russia targeted the Armenian Church. Russia curtailed the Church's advances in the society. In 1839, attempting to stem the tide of nationalist movements within the Ottoman Empire, Tanzimat period emerged from the minds of reformist sultans like Mahmud II and Abdulmesid I, as well as prominent reformers who were European educated bureaucrats. Tanzimat included the policy of Ottomanism, which was meant to unite all of the different peoples living in Ottoman territories. Muslim and non-Muslim, Turkish and Greek, Armenian and Jewish, Kurd and Arab. For this purpose, Islamic law was put aside in favor of secular law. This policy officially began with the imperial rescript of the Rose Chamber of 1839, declaring equality before the law for both Muslim and non Muslim Ottomans. In 1863, Ottoman Armenians were introduced to a set of major reforms as an extension of Tanzimat. The Armenian National Constitution 150 articles drafted by Nahabit Rusnian, Servichan, Nigago Balian, Kriker Odian and Kriker Margosian defined the condition of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire, but also introduced regulations defining the authority of the Patriarch. The constitution of the Armenian National Assembly was seen as a milestone by progressive Armenians. A second development was the introduction of elementary education, colleges and other institutions of learning by Protestant missionaries. Communications improved with the starting of Armenian newspapers. Books about Armenian history enabled a comparison of the past with current conditions and expanded readers' horizons. This was part of an evolution in Armenian political consciousness from purely cultural romanticism to a program for action. 1860 and onward, the number of Armenian schools, philanthropic and patriotic organizations multiplied in the Ottoman Empire. The initial aim of Protestant missionaries were the conversion of the Muslims and Jews, but soon they became involved with Protestant reformation of the Orthodox Armenians. The Armenian subjects of the empire influenced by the Armenian diaspora, the network of congregations and schools of the Protestant missionaries throughout the Ottoman Empire begin to rethink their position in the world. In 1872, the journalist Grigor Ardzaruni from Ottoman Empire said, Yesterday we were an ecclesiastical community, today we are patriots, tomorrow we will be a nation of workers and thinkers. A parallel development occurred in Russian Armenia. Before 1840, Armenian journals were mainly in the hands of the clergy. This was changed. Along with the schools, the press played an important educational role and pointed the way to insurrection. From the first day when Rev. William Goodell settled in Constantinople in 1831 to the end of World War I, the missionaries made considerable contributions to the education of Armenians. The European intellectual currents such as ideas of French Revolution were transmitted through the 23,000 Armenian students within 127 Protestant congregations with 13,000 communicants, and 400 schools. In the 1880s, after the Russian defeat in the Crimean War in 1856 and the Polish Rebellion of 1861, Tsar Alexander II increased Russification to reduce the threat of future rebellions. Russia was populated by many minority groups. 
Tsar Alexander II attempted to prevent self-determinationistic tendencies and separatism. Armenian language, schools were targeted. Russia wanted to replace with Russian schools and Russian educational materials. National revival The discovery of Urartu has come to play a significant role in 19th and 20th century Armenian nationalism. Kagak Ozanyan claims that Tanzimat regulations helped the formation of an Armenian political strata and incited the Armenian national spirit, which was aligned with the nation building through revolution aligned with the French Revolution perspective. The Russian Consul General to Ottoman Empire, General Maevsky, recorded the following. The development of ideas of nationalism, salvation and independence, established during the late 19th century, along with the other national movements, as a nascent Armenian intelligentsia promoted the use of these new concepts in society with a particularly an Armenian import. The first wave of these concepts were developed by an Armenian intelligentsia which had studied in Western Europe under the influence of the French Revolution 1789. They were espoused a democratic liberal ideology and the concept of the rights of man. The second wave come with the emergence of Russian revolutionary thought. At the end of the 19th century, the movement was based on a socialist ideology, specifically in its Marxist variant, specifically ARF. There was a major problem, the materialism and class struggle Marxist variant did not directly apply to the socio-economics of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire as much as to those in the Russian Armenia that had already achieved the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Armenian majority A basic form of majority is consisting of more than half of a region's elements or a plurality, larger than any other group considered for establishing a form governes or a state. The six vilayets or six provinces were presented as the Armenian populated vilayets provinces of the Ottoman Empire, while Erevan and Kars on the Russian side. <laughs> Founding The development of ideas of nationalism, salvation and independence, established during the late 19th century, gathered momentum with the establishment of Armenian Revolutionary Federation, Social Democrat Hunchakian Party and Armenakan later named as Ramgavar. The organized Armenian activities traced back to first known Armenian group, the Union of Salvation, before the three major groups established themselves. On March 3, 1872, 46 Armenians come together to build Union of Salvation Armenian different from the Russian Union of Salvation. The organization declared, Gone is our honor, our churches have been violated, they kidnapped our brides and our youth, they have taken away our rights and try to exterminate our nation. On April 26, 1872 villages around Van send a request, In order to save ourselves from these evils, we are prepared to follow you even if we must shed blood or die. We are ready to go wherever. If the alternative to our present condition is to become Russified, let us be Russified together. If it is to be emigration, let us emigrate. If we are to die, let us die. This organization had not only direct contact with the Russian government but with certain Russian organization. These Russian organizations had goals to liberate the Ottoman Armenians from Ottoman Empire. Union of Salvation served a major step toward the formation of the first Armenian political party, the Armenakan. In 1881 Erzurum, Ottoman Armenians educated with the European way began to make attempts in forming organizations, secret societies, local groups, such as the Protectors of the Fatherland 1881, which was established in Erzurum. Protectors of the Fatherland was almost certainly affected by the ideas of French Revolution and Greek Revolution as freedom or death was their motto. The Protectors of the Fatherland was significant Armenian organization. The constitution and the bylaws were memorized as written documents were dangerous. The membership was performed by sponsorship. Members are organized in tens, and only the leader had access to the central committee. After the first couple months in Erzurum membership became in hundreds, in 1885, the Armenian Democratic Liberal Party was established in Van by Makertich Portakalyan, who later went into exile in Marseille but kept in touch with local leaders, and published a journal of political and social enlightenment titled Larmini. The Armenians of Van continued to develop the political principles behind Armenian nationalism, in secret. 
The party's aim soon become to win for the Armenians the right to rule themselves, through revolution. Their view on how to liberate Armenia from the Ottoman Empire was that it should be through the press, national awakening and unarmed resistance. In 1887, the Social Democrat Hunchakian Party was the first socialist party in the Ottoman Empire and in Persia by Avetis Nazarbekian, Maryam Vardanian, Gavorg Garajian, Ruben Khan Azat, Christopher Ahanian, Gabriel Kafian, and Manuel Manuelian, a group of college students who met in Geneva, Switzerland, with the goal to gain Armenia's independence from the Ottoman Empire. Hunchak means bell in English, and was taken by party members to represent awakening, enlightenment, and freedom. In 1889 the Young Armenia Society was founded by Christopor Mikaelian in Tbilisi. The Young Armenia Society organized Fedei campaigns into Ottoman territory. The Young Armenia Society an armed expedition to Ottoman Armenia with the Gugunian expedition. Its aims were the carrying out reprisals against Kurds persecuting Armenians in the Ottoman Empire. The society believed that the Russians would assist in the creation of an autonomous Armenian province under Russian rule. In 1890 the Armenian Revolutionary Federation or Dashniksushian was founded in Tiflis. Its members armed themselves into Fedei groups to defend Armenian villages from widespread oppression, attacks and persecution of the Armenians. It being seen as the only solution to save the people from Ottoman oppression and massacres, its initial aim was to guarantee reforms in the Armenian provinces and to gain eventual autonomy. During 1880–1890 the local communication channels were developed. The organizations were fully functional under Ankara, Amasya, Koram, Diyarbakir, Yozgat, and Tokat. In 1893 they began to use wall newspapers newspapers like billboards directed toward the non-Armenian subjects. The main theme of these materials were people should take control of their own life against the oppressors. These ideological communicants did not have any effect on the Muslims. These activities ended with clashes between revolutionaries and Ottoman police. Generally resulted with the jail time. Sultan panicked, and local authorities act against them as they were cutting telegraph wires, bombing the odd government buildings. Britain or European powers concluded that however if there would be more interference these would end with religious fanaticism, and a civil war massacres would occur. <laughs> Notable figures The partisan movement was established by these leaders. Arf, Stepan Zorian, Christopor Mikhailian, Simon Zaverian, Armanakin, Makertich Portakalian, Hentchik, Avetis Nazarbekian, Maryam Vardanian, Gavorg Garajian, Ruben Khan Azat, Christopher Ahanian, Gabriel Kafian, and Manuel Manuelianthier were many notables besides the founding leaders listed. The classifications given below refer to the titles for which they are mostly remembered today. They served in multiple duties and ranks. The Church Armenian Nationalism and Armenian Religion The Armenian Apostolic Church, a non-Chalcedonian church, which is also the world's oldest national church is intertwined. The main voices of the movement were secular, as close to the turn of the century, Massis published in the capital, the Hyusisipile and Ards v. Vasperkin published in the van became the main national organs journals. These publications were secular. Major Armenian writers of the era, Michael Nalbandian and Raphael Patkanian can be counted among the influential. Beginning with 1863, Armenian Patriarch of Constantinople began to share his powers with the Armenian National Assembly and his powers were limited by the Armenian National Constitution. He perceived the changes as erosion of his community. Armenian religious leaders played a key roles in the revolutionary movement. The Patriarch of Constantinople Mkr Tik Krimian was an important figure. Mkr Tik Krimian transferred to Jerusalem in his later years, although this was actually an exile. <laughs> Great Powers, Russo-Turkish War Beginning in the mid-19th century, the Great Powers took issue with the Empire's treatment of its Christian minorities and increasingly pressured extend equal rights to all its citizens. 
Following the violent suppression of Christians in the uprisings in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria and Serbia in 1875, the Great Powers invoked the 1856 Treaty of Paris by claiming that it gave them the right to intervene and protect the Ottoman Empire's Christian minorities. By the late 1870s, the Greeks, along with several other Christian nations in the Balkans, frustrated with their conditions, had, with the help of the powers, broken free of Ottoman rule. The Armenians, on the other hand, received less interest and no support that wasn't later withdrawn from the great powers and remained, by and large, stagnant during these years, earning them the title of Millet i Sadika or the Loyal Millet. Armenian position changed as an intellectual class began to emerge among Armenian society. At the same time, the Armenian Patriarchate of Constantinople, Nurses II of Constantinople 1874 forwarded Armenian complaints of widespread forced land seizure, forced conversion of women and children, arson, protection extortion, rape, and murder, to the powers. March 1878, after the conclusion of the 1877–78 Russo-Turkish War, the Armenians began to look more toward the Russian Empire as the ultimate guarantors of their security. Patriarch Nurses Varjabedian approached the Russian leadership during the negotiations with the Ottomans in San Stefano and convinced them to insert a clause, Article 16 to Treaty of San Stefano, stipulating that the Russian forces occupying the Armenian populated provinces in the Eastern Ottoman Empire would withdraw only with the full implementation of reforms. June 1878, Great Britain was troubled with Russia's holding on to so much Ottoman territory in the Treaty of San Stefano and forced the parties for a new negotiations with the convening of the Congress of Berlin. The Article 61 of the Treaty of Berlin contained the same text as Article 16 but removed any mention that Russian forces would remain in the provinces. Instead, the Ottoman government was periodically to inform the great powers of the progress of the reforms. The Armenian National Assembly and Patriarch Nurses II of Constantinople sent Catholicos Mgr Dick Crimian to present the case for the Armenians at Berlin. In his famous patriotic speech following the Berlin negotiations, the paper ladle, Mgr Dick Crimian advised Armenians to take the national awakening of Bulgaria, liberation of Bulgaria, as a model, as the hopes for self-determination were ignored by the European Community of Nations. In Bulgarian historiography, liberation of Bulgaria means the events of the Russo-Turkish War of 1877–78 that led to the re-establishment of Bulgarian sovereign state with the Treaty of San Stefano. In 1880 Armenians especially encouraged by the Prime Minister Gladstone touched the Armenian issue with the words to serve Armenia is to serve the civilization. June 11, 1880 The Great Powers sent to port an identic note which asked for the enforcement of the Article 61. This followed on January 2, 1881 with a British circular on Armenia to other powers, the Young Armenia Society believed that the Russians would assist in the creation of an autonomous Armenian province under Russian rule. The ARF is often accused of having tactics, even today viewed as still being, aimed at convincing Western governments and diplomatic circles to sponsor the party's demands. The Armenian national movement had discovered through their revolutionary movement that neither Tsar Alexander II with his idealism nor Gladstone's liberalism was a dependable hope. Armenian diaspora Significant European and American movements began with the Armenian diaspora in France and in the US as early as in the 1890s. The previous Armenian migrations were minor or and had not been statistically significant. In 1885, the Armenian Patriotic Society of Europe was established in Cheselton Road, Fulham, with its headquarters there. Its goal was that the Armenian diaspora should help those in their native land, both financially and raise Armenian political consciousness about its subject condition. Various political parties and benevolent unions, such as branches for the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, the Social Democrat Henchagian Party, and the Armenian General Benevolent Union which was initially founded in Constantinople, were established wherever there was a considerable number of Armenians. The Armenian diaspora played a significant role in every stage such as Armenian Revolutionary Federation in diaspora did not forgive what they saw as betrayal of the free, independent Armenia the motto of the party and campaigned against the Soviet state in a variety of ways. Topic. 
Activities Ottoman Empire Topic Abdul Hamid II era The emergence of the Armenian partisan movement in the early 1880s and the armed struggle by the late 1880s fall into the Sultan Abdul Hamid II's reign Abdul Hamid II come to rule where he oversaw a period of decline in the power and extent of the empire. He ruled from 31 August 1876 until he was deposed on 27 April 1909. <laughs> Armed movement The partisan movement organized around Armenian centers, such that before Arf replaced the Armenakans, Armenakans mainly operated in and around the city of Van. There are advantages to look events using the regions as the groups were organized regional bases. <laughs> Capital the Kum Kapu demonstration occurred in the Kumkapi district of Constantinople on July 27, 1890. The cause of the demonstrations were, "...to awaken the maltreated Armenians and to make the sublime port fully aware of the miseries of the Armenians." The Hunchaks had come to a conclusion that the demonstrations at Kum Kapu were unsuccessful. Similar demonstration on a lesser scale followed throughout most of the 1890s. The 1896 Ottoman Bank takeover was the seizing of the Ottoman Bank in Constantinople on the 26th of August 1896. Bank takeover was planned by members of the ARF. In an effort to raise further awareness and action by the major European powers, 28 armed men and women led primarily by Papkin Siuni and Karakin Pastirmasian took over the bank which largely employed European personnel from Great Britain and France. Stirred largely due to the inaction of the European powers in regards to pogroms and massacres instigated by the Sultan Abdul Hamid II. The ARF members saw its seizure as their best attempt to bring full attention to the massacres. The Yildiz assassination attempt was a failed assassination attempted on Sultan Abdul Hamid II by the ARF at Yildiz Mosque on July 21, 1905. Van, Bitlis Villayes Lake Van region Certain geographical and ethnic factors favored Van as a center. The Lake Van is the frontier to Russia and Persia, which assistance from was easily accessible. In May 1889, Bashkale resistance was the bloody encounter of three revolutionaries of Armenakan. Bashkale was a town in the Van province. The comrades Karapet Kolaksizian, Hovenis Agrapasian, and Vardan Golashian were stopped and demanded that they disarm. On them were two documents addressed to Kolaksizian, one from Avetis Patigian of London and the other from Makertich Portakalian, in Marseille. Ottomans believed that the men were members of a large revolutionary apparatus and the discussion was reflected on newspapers, Eastern Express, Oriental Advertiser, Sade, and Tariq and the responses were on the Armenian papers. In some Armenian circles, this event was considered as a martyrdom and brought other armed conflicts. The defense of Van was the Armenian population in Van defense against the Ottoman Empire in June, 1896. The Khanasur expedition was the Armenian militia's response on July 25, 1897 to the defense of Van, where Mizrik tribe ambushed a squad of Armenian defenders and mercilessly slaughtered them. The Battle of Holy Apostles Monastery was an armed conflict of the Armenian militia in Holy Apostles Monastery near Mush, in November 1901. Andranik Ozanian's intentions were to attract the attention of the foreign consuls at Mush to the plight of the Armenian peasants and to provide a glimmer of hope for the oppressed Armenians of the eastern provinces. <laughs> Diyarbechir, Aleppo Villayes Sasson was formerly part of the Sanjak of Syart which was in Diyarbakir Vilayet of the Ottoman Empire, later part of Batman province of Turkey. Zitun was formerly part of the Aleppo Vilayet of the Ottoman Empire, later Suleymanli in the Karamanmaras province of Turkey. The Social Democrat Hunchakian Party and the ARF were active in the region. 1862 was important for Zitun. The Armenians of Zitun had historically enjoyed a period of high autonomy in the Ottoman Empire until the 19th century. In the first half of the 19th century, the central government decided to bring this region of the empire under tighter control. 
This strategy ultimately proved ineffective. In the summer of 1862 the Ottomans sent a military contingent of 12,000 men to Zetun to reassert government control. The force, however, was held at bay by the Armenians and, through French mediation, the first Zetun resistance was brought to a close. The Zetun Armenians gave inspiration to the ideas of creating an Armenian state in Cilicia. The Sassan resistance of 1894 was the resistance of the Hunchuk militia of the Sassoon region. The region continued to be in conflict between the Fedei and the Muslim Ottomans between the local Armenian villages. Between the years 1891 and 1895, activists from the Armenian Social Democrat Hunchakian Party visited Cilicia, and established a new branch in Zetun. The Zetun Rebellion took place in 1895. In spring 1902, a representative of the ARF, Vahan Manvelian, was sent to in Sassone with the purpose of stopping the insignificant skirmishes, but only irritating the Muslims. In February 1903, Sofia, at the Three Congress ARF, it was decided to assign Sasson of committee fighting groups. Harar Juke went to Van where he made organize the Sasson 1902. Alongside Harar Juke was Andranik. Andranik became the main organizer and head of Sasson uprising of 1904. Harar Juke was killed on April 13 in village Galiguzan. He was buried in a court of a local church near to Sarab Pasa. The Sassoon Uprising was the resistance of the Armenian militia in the Sassoon region. <inaudible> <inaudible> Armenian reform program During 1880–1881, while the Armenian National Liberation Movement was in its early stage, lack of outside support and inability to maintain a trained, organized Kurdish force diminished Kurdish aspirations. However, two prominent Kurdish families tribes mounted opposition to the empire, based more from an ethno-nationalistic standpoint. The Badr Khans were secessionists while the Saeeds of Nahiri were autonomists. The Russo-Turkish War of 1877–78 was followed in 1880–1881 by the attempt of Sheikh Ubaid Allah of Niri to found an independent Kurd principality around Ottoman Persian border including the Van Vilayet where Armenian population was significant. Sheikh Ubaid Allah of Niri gathered 20,000 fighters. Lacking discipline, his man left the ranks after pillaging and acquiring riches from the villages in the region indiscriminately, including Armenian villages. Sheikh Ubaid Allah of Niri captured by the Ottoman forces in 1882 and this movement ended. Security, reform, order The Kurdish force, rebels, bandits sacked neighboring towns and villages with impunity, the central assumption of the Hamidiya system Kurdish tribes Kurdish chiefdoms cited among Armenian security concerns could be brought under military discipline proved to be utopian. The Persian Cossack Brigade later proved that it can function as independent unit, but Ottoman example, which was modeled after, never replaced the tribal loyalty to Ottoman Sultan or even to its establishing unit. In 1892, first time a trained and organized Kurdish force encouraged by the Sultan Abdul Hamid II. It was established by and named after Sultan. The Hamidia Corps or Hamidia Light Cavalry Regiments were well armed, irregular, majority Kurdish cavalry minor amounts of other nationalities, such as Turkoman formations that operated in the eastern provinces of the Ottoman Empire. They were intended to be modeled after the Caucasian Cossack Regiments example Persian Cossack Brigade and were firstly tasked to patrol the Russo-Ottoman frontier and secondly, to reduce the potential of Kurdish-Armenian cooperation. The Hamidia cavalry was in no way a cross-tribal force, despite their military appearance, organization, and potential. Hamidia quickly find out that they could only be tried through a military court-martial they became immune to civil administration. Realizing their immunity, they turned their tribes into legalized robber brigades as they steal grain, reap fields not of their possession, drive off herds, and openly steal from shopkeepers. Kurdish chieftain also taxed the population of the region in sustaining these units, which Armenians perceived this Kurdish taxation as an exploitation. When Armenian spokesmen confronted the Kurdish chieftain issue of double taxation, it brought about enmity between both populations. The Hamidia cavalry harassed and assaulted Armenians. In 1908, after the overthrow of Sultan, the Hamidia cavalry was disbanded as an organized force, but as they were tribal forces before official recognition, they stayed as tribal forces after dismemberment. 
The Hamidiyya cavalry is described as a military disappointment and a failure because of its contribution to tribal feuds. <laughs> Hamidian massacres a major role in the Hamidian massacres of 1894–96 has been often ascribed to the Hamidia regiments, particularly during the bloody suppression of Sassan 1894. On July 25, 1897 the Khanasur expedition was against the Kurdish Mizrik tribe Muzari Kurds who owned a significant portion of this cavalry. The Hamidian massacres were brought to an end through mediation by the great powers. However instead of Armenian autonomy in these regions, Kurds Kurdish tribal chiefs retained much of their autonomy and power. The Abdul Hamid made little attempt to alter the traditional power structure of segmented, agrarian Kurdish societies Aga, Sheikh, and tribal chief. Because of their geographical position at the southern and eastern fringe of the empire and mountainous topography, and limited transportation and communication system. The state had little access to these provinces and were forced to make informal agreements with tribal chiefs, for instance the Ottoman Qadi and Mufti did not have jurisdiction over religious law which bolstered Kurdish authority and autonomy. <laughs> Abdul Hamid II's position Sultan Abdul Hamid II wanted to reinforce the territorial integrity of the embattled Ottoman Empire, reasserted pan-Islamism as a state ideology. Abdul Hamid II perceived the Ottoman Armenians to be an extension of foreign hostility, a means by which Europe could get at our most vital places and tear out our very guts. Topic: <laughs> Second Constitutional Era. The Armenians supported the Young Turk Revolution, whose concepts were present in varying proportions among Armenians at the turn of the 20th century after the revolution. The Ottoman Empire in the Second Constitutional Era was struggling to keep its territories and promoting Ottomanism among its citizens. Arf, previously outlawed, became the main representative of the Armenian community in the Ottoman Empire, replacing the pre-1908 Armenian elite, which had been composed of merchants, artisans, and clerics who had seen their future in obtaining more privileges within the boundaries of the state's version of Ottomanism. During the same time the Armenian Revolutionary Federation was moving out of this context and developing, what was just a normal extension of its national freedom concept, the concept of the independent Armenian state. With this national transformation ARF's activities become a national cause. ARF, in the early 20th century was socialists, and Marxist which can be seen from the party's first program. <laughs> <laughs> Armed movement <laughs> Van, Bitlis Villiers Lake Van region at the 1907 Battle of Sulik, Kavork Chavish was critically wounded on May 25, 1907 during a large firefight with the Ottoman army in Sulik, Mush. Kavork Chavish escaped the fighting. Two days later his body was found in Kiyosaban Bashan on May 27 under a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Balkans the Armenians settled between the 6th and the 11th century in the Rodopis, Thrace and Macedonia were several thousand in number and were mostly Paulicians and Tondrakians. Later as the Ottoman Empire extended towards the Europe, a minor amount of Armenians moved along the frontiers and settled throughout the Balkans. At the time of the Balkan Wars 1912-1913, the Armenians in Bulgaria were about 35,000. Andranik Ozanian participated in the Balkan Wars of 1912–1913, within the Bulgarian army, alongside General Garajan Nzhdeh as a commander of Armenian auxiliary troops. Andranik met revolutionist Boris Serafov in Sofia and the two pledged themselves to work jointly for the oppressed peoples of Armenia and Macedonia. Andranik participated in the First Balkan War of 1912–1913 alongside Garajan Nzhdeh as a chief commander of 12th Battalion of Lozengrad 3rd Brigade of the Macedonian Adrianopolitan Militia under the command of Colonel Alexander Protogarov. His detachment consisted of 273 Armenian volunteers, which was more than half of the 531 non-Macedonian-born fighters in the group. 
On October 20, the Macedonian Adrianopolitan militia and Andranik's volunteer detachment, tight circle around Edirne and surrendered Yever Pasha's forces. On November 4, 1912 the Macedonian Adrianopolitan militia with the support of Andranik's volunteer detachment defeated numerically exceeding Turks near Momchilgrad. On January 6, 1913, in a small town church in Radosto, Alexander Protogerov awarded all Armenian fighters for bravery. Andranik Ozanyan was honored with the Order of Bravery. The Ottoman Parliament The new parliament comprised 142 Turks, 60 Arabs, 25 Albanians, 23 Greeks, 12 Armenians including four from Arf and two from Hunchaks, five Jews, four Bulgarians, three Serbs and one Vlach in the elections of 1908. The Committee of Union and Progress Cup could count on the support of about 60 deputies and became the main party. Karakan Pastramagian became a member of the Ottoman parliament part from the Arf deputies. During his four years as a deputy, he worked for the railroad bill. Main object was to build railroads as soon as possible in the villages which were considered to be Russia's future possessions. For that reason neither France nor Germany wished to undertake it. Another fundamental object was to build those lines with American capital, which would make it possible to counteract the Russo-Franco-German policies and financial intrigues. But in spite of all efforts unable to overcome the German opposition, although, as the outcome of the struggle in connection with that bill, two ministers of public works were forced to resign their post. The reform package The politics in Istanbul was centered around trying to find a solution to the demands of Arab and Armenian reformist groups. 19th-century politics of Ottoman Empire dealt with the decentralized demands of the Balkan nations. The same pattern was originating from the eastern provinces. With most of the Christian population having already left the empire after the Balkan Wars, a redefinition of Ottoman politics was in place with a greater emphasis on Islam as a binding force. The choice of this policy should also be considered as external forces imperialists were Christians. It was a policy of them against us. In 1913 Karakan Pastramagian had taken active a part in the conferences held for the consideration of the Armenian reforms. He was in Paris and the Netherlands, as the delegate of the ARF, to meet the inspectors general who were invited to carry out the reforms. The reform package was signed in February 1914, between the Ottoman Empire represented by Grand Vezier Said Halim Pasha and Russia. L. C. Westenink, an administrator for the Dutch East Indies, and Major Hoff, a major in the Norwegian Army, were selected as the first two inspectors. Hoff was in van when the war broke out, just as Westenink was preparing to depart for his post in Erzurum. <laughs> <laughs> Committee of Union and Progress's position Once in power, the Committee of Union and Progress introduced a number of new initiatives intended to promote the modernization of the Ottoman Empire. CUP advocated a program of orderly reform under a strong central government, as well as the exclusion of all foreign influence. CUP promoted industrialization and administrative reforms. Administrative reforms of provincial administration quickly led to a higher degree of centralization. Activities Russian Empire <inaudible> Edict on Armenian Church Property 1903-1904 The Tsar's Russification program reached its peak with the decree of June 12, 1903 confiscating the property of the Armenian Church. Mkr Tik Krimian Catholicos of Armenia revolted against the Tsar. When the Tsar refused to back down the Armenians turned to the ARF. The Armenian clergy had previously been very wary of the ARF, condemning their socialism as anti-clerical. However, ARF acquired significant support and sympathy in Russian administration. Mainly because of the ARF's attitude to the Ottoman Empire, the party enjoyed the support of the Central Russian Administration, as Tsarist and ARF foreign policy had the same alignment until 1903. The Edict on Armenian Church Property was faced by strong ARF opposition, because it perceived a Tsarist threat to Armenian national existence. 
In 1904, the Dashnik Congress specifically extended their program to support the rights of Armenians in the Russian Empire as well as Ottoman Turkey. As a result, the ARF leadership decided to actively defend Armenian churches. The ARF formed a central committee for self-defense in the Caucasus and organized a series of protests. At Ganzik the Russian army responded by firing into the crowd, killing ten, and further demonstrations were met with more bloodshed. The Dashniks and Hunchaks began a campaign of assassination against Tsarist officials in Transcaucasia and they succeeded in wounding Prince Golitsyn. The events convinced Tsar Nicholas that he must reverse his policies. He replaced Golitsyn with the Armenophile governor Count Alarion Ivanovich Vaontsov Dashkov and returned the property of the Armenian church. Gradually order was restored and the Armenian bourgeoisie once more began to distance itself from the revolutionary nationalists. <laughs> Armenian Azeri massacres 1904–1905 Unrest in Transcaucasia, which also included major strikes, reached a climax with the widespread uprisings throughout the Russian Empire known as the 1905 Revolution. 1905 saw a wave of mutinies, strikes and peasant uprisings across Imperial Russia and events in Transcaucasia were particularly violent. In Baku, the center of the Russian oil industry, class tensions mixed with ethnic rivalries. The city was almost wholly composed of Azeris and Armenians, but the Armenian middle class tended to have a greater share in the ownership of the oil companies and Armenian workers generally had better salaries and working conditions than the Azeris. In December 1904, after a major strike was declared in Baku, the two communities began fighting each other on the streets and the violence spread to the countryside. Tribune of People, 1912 In January 1912, a total of 159 Armenians were charged with membership of an anti-revolutionary organization. During the revolution Armenian revolutionaries were split into old Dashniks, allied with the cadets and young Dashniks, aligned with the SRs. To determine the position of Armenians all forms of Armenian national movement put into trial. The entire Armenian intelligentsia, including writers, physicians, lawyers, bankers, and even merchants, on trial. When the Tribune finished its work, 64 charges were dropped and the rest were either imprisoned or exiled for varying periods. Topic. Activities during World War I Beginning at the end of July and ending on August 2, 1914, the Armenian Congress at Erzurum was a watershed event between the Ottoman government Committee of Union and Progress and Ottoman Armenian citizens. The conversation between groups were established with the Armenian liaisons Simon Vratsian, Arshak Vramian, Rostam Stepan Zorian, and E. Aknoni Malumian and Ottoman liaisons Dr. Behadin Shakir, Omer Naji Omer Naci, and Hilmi Bey, also accompanied by an international entourage of peoples from the Caucasus. Committee of Union and Progress requested from Ottoman Armenians to facilitate the conquest of Transcaucasia by inciting a rebellion with the Russian Armenians against the Tsarist army in the event of a Caucasus campaign. The Ottoman plan was to draw the Persians, Kurds, Tatars and Georgians into a holy war against the Allies. In order to carry this project it was necessary to make sure that Armenian geographical position would not hamper cooperation between these races. If this agreement went forward and the Ottoman Armenians did not support the Russians, they would be offered autonomy. This offer was one step forward from Armenian reform package, which was already established in February 1914. The Tsar promised autonomy for Russian Armenia. A representative meeting of Russian Armenians assembled in Tiflis, Caucasus, during August 1914. The Tsar promised autonomy to six Turkish Armenian villages as well as the two Russian Armenian provinces. Tsar asked Armenians' loyalty and support for Russia in the conflict. The proposal was agreed upon and nearly 20,000 Armenians, Armenian volunteer units, served with the Russian colors. The Armenians were quite willing to remain loyal to their government, but declared their inability to agree to the other proposal, that of inciting their compatriots under Russian rule to insurrection. 
In spite of these promises and threats, the executive committee of the ARF informed the Turks that the Armenians could not accept the Turkish proposal, and on their behalf advised the Turks not to participate in the present war, which would be very disastrous to the Turks themselves. Armed movement The Russian Armenian Volunteer Corps was a military fighting unit within the Imperial Russian Army. Composed of several groups at battalion strength, its ranks were exclusively made up of Armenians from the Russian Empire, though there were also a number of Armenian from the Ottoman Empire. In August 1914, following Germany's declaration of war against Russia, Count Ilarion Vaontsov Dashkov, the Russian Viceroy of the Caucasus, approached Armenian leaders in the Tiflis to broach the idea of a formation of a separate fighting corps. His offer was received warmly and within a few weeks Armenian volunteers began to enlist. Responsibility for its formation was given to a special committee created by the Armenian National Council, which coordinated its activities from Tiflis, Yerevan and Alexandropol. Initial In November 1914, Drastamat Kanayan had the 2nd Battalion of the Armenian Volunteers. At the Bergman Offensive, the 2nd Battalion of the Armenian Volunteers engaged in battle for the first time, near Bayezid. In the course of a bloody combat which lasted 24 hours, commander of the battalion, was seriously wounded. From that day to March of the following year, Drastamat Kanayan remained in critical condition. The Battle of Sarakamish took place from December 22, 1914 to January 17, 1915 as part of the Caucasus Campaign. The Ottomans employed a strategy which demanded that their troops be highly mobile and to arrive at specified objectives at precise times. Along the Kars Oblast, the 3rd Battalion commanded by Hamazasp and 4th Battalion by Kari operated on the front facing Erzurum between Sarakamish and Oltu, 4th Battalion of the Armenian Volunteers engaged at Bardas Pass. The Ottoman army suffered a delay of 24 hours in the Bardas Pass, and 4th Battalion of the Armenian Volunteers lost 600 troops in a battle there. On December 16, 1914, the Ottoman Empire dismantled the Armenian Reform Package, just after the first engagement of the Caucasus Campaign the Bergman Offensive. On the other side, the Tsar visited the Caucasus Front on December 30, 1914, telling the head of the Armenian Church that a most brilliant future awaits the Armenians. The first year Between April 15–18 of 1915, the Brigade of Armenian Volunteers under the command of Andranik valiantly participated in the Battle of Dilmun of the Persian Campaign. Drastamat Kanayan though remained in critical condition, his battalion led into eleven battles in the neighborhood of Alashkert, Tutak, and Malashkert, until Drastamat Kanayan recovered and returned to resume the command. The Red Sunday the leaders of the Armenian community were arrested and moved to two holding centers near Ankara upon the order of the Minister of the Interior Mehmed Talat Bey of April 24, 1915. Mehmed Talat Bey gave the detention order on April 24, 1915, which commenced at 8 p.m. by Chief of Police of Constantinople Bedri Bey, Hampartsom Boyadizhan, a Hunchakian, was among the first to be arrested in April 1915 at Red Sunday. After a trial in July, he was hanged on 24 August 1915, with 12 comrades. On May 6, 1915, Andranik was the commanding officer of the 1st Armenian Volunteer Detachment, about 1,200 soldiers, which helped lift the siege of Van. Theodore G. Chernozabov for the successes of Andranik in Ashnaka, V. Rush Koran, Kanika, Koder, Saray, Mola Hassan, Belenjik, and Garateli stated significantly associated with the fighting of the first Armenian volunteers, headed by Andranik. Chernozabov praised Andranik as a brave and experienced chief, who well understood the combat situation, described him as always at the head of militia, enjoying great prestige among the volunteers. On June 15, 1915, the 20 martyrs from Hunchakian leaders, after spending two years in terrible conditions in Ottoman prisons, and undergoing lengthy mock trials, 20 prominent figures, Paramas, Dr. Ben, Aram Achikbashian, Vanig and others were sentenced to death by hanging. 
All 20 men were hanged in the central square of Constantinople, known as Sultan Bayezid Square. Paramus's last words before his hanging were, You can only hang our bodies, but not our ideology. You will see tomorrow on the eastern horizon a socialist Armenia. In July 1915, Kecho Karakan Pastramidian's assistant and commander, died on the shores of Lake Van. Topic: The second year. The biggest achievement of the first year was the Armenian governing of the administration for Western Armenia, Republic of Van, with Aram Manukian as the head. The Republic of Van was a temporary Armenian provisional government between 1915 and 1918. It was also briefly referred as Free Vasparakan. Andranik commanded a battalion that defeated Halil Pasha during the Battle of Bitlis in 1916. Negotiations with the French for returning Armenian refugees to their homes in Cilicia were performed with leadership of Bago Nubar. Negotiations were directed by Key Dorsey which is a metonymy to French Ministry Foreign Affairs. Foreign Minister Aristide Bryan seized this opportunity to provide troops for French commitment made in Sykes-Picot Agreement, which was still secret at the time. Armenian leadership also meet with Sir Mark Sykes and Georges Picot. The Legion force was established officially in Cairo, Egypt in November 1916. The force named as French Armenian Legion and planned under the command of General Edmund Allenby. However, beginning with 1917 and not in the original agreement, this Armenian force fought in Palestine, Syria. Topic: The Third Year. The February Revolution of 1917 caused chaos among Russian soldiers in the Caucasus front and by the end of that year most Russian soldiers left the front and returned to their homes. In July 1917 six Armenian regiments were created in the Caucasus front with support of Armenian organizations in Petrograd and Tiflis. As of October 1917 two Armenian divisions were already created, with Tavmas Nazarbekian at their head. As of early 1918 only few thousand Armenian volunteers under the command of 200 officers opposed the Turkish offences. In the spring of 1917, Karakan Pastormagian and Dr. Hakob Zavriev, was sent from the Caucasus to Petrograd to negotiate with the temporary Russian government concerning Caucasian affairs. Karakan Pastormagian left for America in June 1917 as the representative of the Armenian National Council of Tiflis and as the special envoy of the Catholicos of all the Armenians. On December 5, 1917, the Armistice of Erzing Khan was signed between the Russians and Ottomans, ending armed conflicts between the two states. After the Bolshevik seizure of power, a multinational Congress of Transcaucasian representatives met to create a provisional regional executive body known as Transcaucasian Sejm. Topic: <laughs> Last Year. In 1918, the Russian authorities made Andranik a major general and decorated him six times for gallantry. The source stated as General Antronik as a command of the Armenian and Russian forces against those of the Turks, was in 59 engagements, several horses shot under him but kept fighting after the Tsar's army collapsed. The roots of the First National Republic was achieved by the Armenians under Russian control, which devised a national congress in October 1917. The convention in Tiflis was concluded in September 1917 with delegates from former Romanov realm 203, which 103 belonged to the ARF. On March 3, 1918, the Russians followed the armistice of Erzing Khan with the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, and left the war, with territorial losses. From March 14 to April 1918, when a conference was held between the Ottoman Empire and the delegation of the same. When the First Republic of Armenia First Republic of Armenia was proclaimed in 1918, the ARF became the ruling party. Between March and April 1918 Andranik was the governor of the administration for Western Armenia, Karakan Pastormagian was assigned as the ambassador of the First Republic of Armenia to the United States in Washington, D.C. The original plan for the Armenian army was to consist of Tavmas Nazarbekian's 60,000 soldiers with Andranik Pasha's 30,000 fedais. However after the splitting of the Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic, the Ottoman Empire had taken Alexandropol and were intent on eliminating the center of Armenian resistance based in Yerevan. 
After the formation of the First Republic of Armenia in May 1918 Andranik fought alongside volunteer units to combat the Ottoman army. The Armenians were able to prevent total elimination and delivered crushing blows to the Turkish army in the battles of Sardarapat, Karakilisa and Abirin. The First Republic of Armenia had to sign the Treaty of Batum, which was signed in Batum on June 4, 1918. It was the ADR's first treaty. After the Ottoman Empire took vast swathes of territory and imposed harsh conditions, the new republic was left with 10,000 square kilometers. Andranik's military leadership was instrumental in allowing the Armenian population of Van to escape the Ottoman army and flee to eastern Armenia. By July inter-ethnic warfare had started in Zangezer. Armenian couriers dispatched to Yerevan pleaded for officers and materiel. The republic couldn't support irregular forces fighting in the south. At the critical moment General Andranik arrived in Zangezer with an irregular division estimated with about 3 to 5,000 men and 40,000 refugees and the occupied provinces of Russian Armenia. As the commander of Armenian forces in Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic, Andranik has declared that his army is determined to continue the war against Ottoman Empire. His activities were concentrated at the link between the Ottoman Empire and the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic at Karabakh, Nakhchivan, and Zangezer. Andranik and his troops were 40 kilometers 25 miles from Shusha, the most important city of Karabakh at the time, in early December 1918. Just before the armistice of Mudros was signed, Andranik was on the way from Zangezer to Shusha, to control the main city of Karabakh. In January 1919 Armenian troops advancing, the British General William M. Thompson gave Andranik assurances that a favourable treaty would be reached at the Paris Peace Conference of 1919. On July 26, 1918 the Centrocaspian dictatorship was a short-lived anti-Soviet client state proclaimed in Baku, forged by the Mensheviks and the ARF. This unrecognised state replaced the Bolshevik Baku Commune in a bloodless coup d'état, the Baku forces mainly commanded by Colonel Avedisev. Under his command were about 6,000 Centrocaspian dictatorship troops of the Baku army. The vast majority of the troops in this force were Armenians, though there were some Russians among them. Their artillery comprised some 40 field guns. Most of the Baku Soviet troops and practically all their officers were Armenians of ARF affiliation. Centrocaspian dictatorship fell on September 15, 1918, when the Ottoman Azerbaijani forces took control of Baku. Path to unified Armenia On October 30, the armistice of Mudros ended the hostilities in the Middle Eastern theater between the Ottoman Empire and the Allies of World War I. It also concluded the Caucasus campaign for the Ottoman Empire. By the end of the war, the Ottoman Empire, although it lost the Persian Campaign, Sinai and Palestine Campaign and Mesopotamian Campaign, it had recaptured all the territory which was lost to the Russians. At this point Ottomans finalized on December 5, 1917, the Armistice of Erzing Khan, on March 3, 1918 Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, on March 14 Trabzon Peace Conference and on June 4, 1918, Treaty of Batum. In 1919, Avedis Aharonian was the head of the Armenian delegation at the Paris Peace Conference with Bago Nubar. In late 1919 Andranik led a delegation to the United States to lobby its support for a mandate for Armenia. He was accompanied by General Jacques Bagratouni, Captain Haig Bonapartian, and Lieutenant Ter Pogosian. In Fresno he directed a campaign in which he raised $500,000 for the relief of Armenian war refugees. Avedis Aharonian signed the Treaty of Sevres formulating the Wilsonian Armenia in direct collaboration with the Armenian diaspora. The Treaty of Sevres was signed between the Allied and Associated Powers and Ottoman Empire at Sevres, France on August 10, 1920. The treaty included a clause on Armenia, it made all parties signing the treaty recognize Armenia as a free and independent state. The drawing of definite borders was, however, left to President Woodrow Wilson and the United States State Department, and was only presented to Armenia on November 22. Wilsonian Armenia refers to the boundary configuration of the Armenian state in the Treaty of Sevres, drawn by Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> Activities during interwar period <laughs> 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 
Territorial disputes of Armenia On September 24 and the Turkish–Armenian War began. Negotiations were then carried out between Karabekir and a peace delegation led by Alexander Khatijan in Alexandropol. Although Karabekir's terms were extremely harsh the Armenian delegation had little recourse but to agree to them. The Treaty of Alexandropol was thus signed on December 3, 1920, after the Armenian government had fallen to a concurrent Soviet invasion on December 2. Azerbaijan claimed most of the territory Armenia was sitting on, demanding all or most parts of the former Russian provinces of Elizabethpol, Tiflis, Yerevan, Kars, and Batum. Territorial clashes between Armenia and Azerbaijan took place throughout 1919 and 1920, most notably in the regions of Nakhchivan, Karabakh and Sayanik In May 1919, DRO led an expeditionary unit that was successful in establishing Armenian administrative control in Nakhchivan. Topic Sovietization and exile of Armenian leaders However, despite Arf's tight grip on power Drastamat Kanayan Ministry of Defense and Aram Manukian Ministry of Interior, the Arf was unable to stop the impending communist invasion of the First Republic of Armenia from the north, which culminated with a Soviet takeover in 1920. It should be noted that there was also a large movement of Armenian communists who aided the Soviet control. The 11th Red Army began its virtually unopposed advance into Armenia on November 29, 1920. The actual transfer of power took place on December 2 in Yerevan. The Armenian leadership approved an ultimatum, presented to it by the Soviet plenipotentiary Boris Legrin. Armenia decided to join the Soviet sphere. The ARF was banned, its leaders exiled and many of its members dispersed to other parts of the world. Daniel Beck Pyramian was arrested and executed by the Bolsheviks in Karakilisa in 1921. In 1937 during the Joseph Stalin's Great Purge against the military and other suspected enemies, his secret police arrested Movses Silikian, Christopher Araratov, Dmitry Muramanov, Agassi Vorosian, Stepan Ahanesian, Hakob Makrichian, and Haratun Hakobyan imprisoned and finally executed in Nort Gorge. Agbalian moved to Lebanon, directed Nishan Palangian Seminarium in Beirut. The Treaty of Kars was signed on October 13, 1921 and ratified in Yerevan on September 11, 1922. Treaty established contemporary borders between Turkey and the South Caucasus states on the count of Armenian lands. Armenian Minister of Foreign Affairs Askenaz M. Ravian and Minister of Interior Pago Makintjan signed the Treaty of Kars, which helped to conclude for the, moment the territorial disputes originate after the Caucasus campaign as a whole. Cilicia <coughs> and French Armenian Legion In January 1920, Turkish national movement advanced his troops into Marish where the Battle of Marish ensued against the French Armenian Legion. The battle resulted in the massacres of 5,000 to 12,000 Armenians, spelling the end of the remaining Armenian population in the region. France disbanded the French Armenian Legion shortly after the war started. One of the Armenian Legion members, Sarkis Tarosian, wrote in his diary that he suspected the French forces gave weapons and ammunition to the Kemalists to allow the French army safe passage out of Cilicia. The Cilicia peace treaty between France and the Turkish national movement was signed on 9 March 1921. It was intended to end the Franco-Turkish War, but failed to do so and was replaced in October 1921 with the Treaty of Ankara. Topic: Republic of Mountainous Armenia, 1922. On the 18th of February 1921, the ARF led an anti-Soviet rebellion in Yerevan and seized power. The ARF controlled Yerevan and the surrounding regions for almost 42 days before being defeated by the numerically superior Red Army troops later in April 1921. The leaders of the rebellion then retreated into the Sinaik region. On 26 April 1921, the 2nd Pan-Zangesarian Congress, held in Tativ, announced the independence of the self-governing regions of Duralakayas Vayats Dzor, Zangezer, and Mountainous Artsakh, under the name of the Republic of Mountainous Armenia and later on 1 June 1921, it was renamed the Republic of Armenia. After months of fierce battles with the Red Army, the Republic of Mountainous Armenia capitulated in July 1921 following Soviet Russia's promises to keep the mountainous region as a part of Soviet Armenia. 
After losing the battle, Garajan Nzhdeh, his soldiers, and many prominent Armenian intellectuals, including leaders of the First Independent Republic of Armenia, crossed the border into neighboring Persian city of Tabriz. Topic: <laughs> Operation Nemesis. Operation Nemesis was the ARS code name for a covert operation in the early 1920s to assassinate the Turkish planners of the Armenian Genocide. Those involved with the planning and execution of the operation including Shahin Natali and Sagamon Tellurian were survivors of genocidal massacres. The operation, between 1920 and 1922, assassinated many significant political and military figures of the Ottoman Empire, the Internal Affairs Minister of Azerbaijan and some Armenians who were working against the Armenian cause. <laughs> Achievements of the movement Establishment of an Armenian state The First Republic of Armenia was the first modern establishment of an Armenian state. The leaders of the government came from mainly the Armenian Revolutionary Federation and also other Armenian political parties who helped create the new republic. State had unquestionably Armenian color, as when it was declared out of two million Armenians Russian in the Caucasus, 1,300,000 Russian Armenians were to be found within the boundaries of the new Republic of Armenia, which also had 300,000 to 350,000 refugees that escaped from the Ottoman Empire. Added to this Armenian population were 350,000 to 400,000 people of other nationalities. There were 1,650,000 Armenians both Russian, and Ottoman origin of the 2 million people within the borders of the new republic which made clearly, uncontested, an Armenian state. Richard G. Hovanesian explains the conditions of the resistance. In the summer of 1918, the Armenian National Councils reluctantly transferred from Tiflis to Yerevan to take over the leadership of the republic from the popular dictator Aram Manukian and the renowned military commander Drastamat Kanayan. It then began the daunting process of establishing a national administrative machinery in an isolated and landlocked misery. This was not the autonomy or independence which Armenian intellectuals had dreamed of and for which a generation of youth had been sacrificed. Yet, as it happened, it was here that the Armenian people were destined to continue their national existence. Topic: <laughs> Cultural heritage. There is a Fedeiz museum in Yerevan named after General Andranik Ozanian. Armenian resistance has left a symbolic dish. The Harissa dish. Armenian Harissa is generally served to commemorate the Musa Da resistance. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Timeline of the movement. The timeline covers the activities of ethnic Armenian citizens of the Ottoman Empire, Russian Empire and significant European cities which had significant Armenian diaspora, such as in France as early as the 1890s. The timeline has events formulated by Social Democrat Hunchakian Party, Armenakan, Armenian Revolutionary Federation, and Armenian Patriotic Society of Europe. The «Liberation Movement», as the term implies an Armenian nationalistic movement aimed to liberate the Armenian people from the domination of Ottoman and Russian powers as explained under the Russian Armenia 1828 to 1918 Armenians in the Ottoman Empire not the period 1453 to 1829 but 1930 to 1922 and also Armenian controlled established or being part of Republic of Van 1915–1918. Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic. 1917–1918. First Republic of Armenia. 1918–1922. And. Centrocaspian Dictatorship. 1918. The events under the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic is not covered. 